So, welcome to the teardown <laughs> of uh, an old power supply of mine. Um, oh, nice sound. Yeah, that's quality. Uh, vintage uh, about 1985. Uh, it belonged to my um, high school, uh, but after I did uh, my last high school year uh, project, um, uh, yeah, somehow it ended up with me. <clears throat> okay, um, so this is obviously uh, of German origin. It's a Stab Labor Netzgerät or Stabilized Lab Power Supply um, from the company EA. Electroautomatic. They still exist. They still make power supplies. I put a link down below somewhere. And it's the model EA3013. I believe there is a model EA3013S available, which is uh, not directly from the company, but uh, you can still get it on eBay or see it on eBay and sometimes. And it's uh, 0 to 30 volts and a whopping 5 amps. And uh, yeah, I know uh, there's this uh, stupid saying, don't turn it on, turn it apart. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> let's see what the thing is doing. looks rather oh I don't know but I see something okay the metric smoke came out <clears throat> okay um yeah Mm hmm yeah very good okay uh, now we can turn it apart I mean it has a little problem here uh, that uh, knob for uh, the current limiting which is only in three steps 0 0.5 1.5 and 5 amps came off and not in the way uh, God intended it to uh, I think you uh, should remove the screw there's only a plastic that left now. Yeah, well, so it won't break my heart to turn that apart. That rhymed. Yeah, after all, I don't know if you've seen on my channel all these lengthy structural analysis videos for CNC machines. Uh, I needed something fun. So, yeah. Yeah, two screws on each side. A perfect U-shaped case. Don't see that anymore. On the back, some big heat sinks with some, yeah, real transistors. 2N3055. No. Sissy MOSFET bullshit. And now, if you compare this today to my other videos I've done, I'm not under the influence. I just need it to relax a little. And before I put the cover off, I should unplug it. Otherwise, this might end badly. Ah, okay. 
have a first look at that beauty. Ooh, that looks nice. Let me prop that up so you can see a little bit better what's inside. Mm. Yeah. So of course I give you a better shot later on, but uh, uh, reminds me. Uh, hold on for a second. Okay. Before I start stepping in there, I wanted to take an isolated uh, screwdriver because, uh, yeah, you see that big electrolytic capacitor here. Of course, it's a linear power supply, so I have a big transformer. Mm -hmm. I guess this is primary and this is secondary going here into all that shebang. And, uh, ooh. Let me change the angle a little bit more if I can. Yeah, the perils of working with an iPad without zoom. So big transformer, big electrolytic, electrolytic capacitor and uh, down there is a bridge rectifier. So I'm a little bit concerned about that guy. So uh, just be on the safe side. Just wait a second. Yeah, just want to be on the safe side. So uh, yeah, this is basically also vintage. Every thing, almost everything is vintage here. It's a Beckman Industry DM twenty five XL. Yeah. <clears throat> Shit happens oh there are colors so let's grab on here and grab on here and it's reasonably dead something up here oh 9.5 volts oh no still was something working inside here I uh, probed that one here. Uh, sorry, with my hands. But the big capacitor, there's really nothing, nothing at all. You know, tiny little bit. No. Dead. It's dead. Okay. Let's dive in. I mean, for a simple power supply, that really looks cross, yeah, well, interesting, complex. So let's see. Uh, we obviously have here a primary side input of the transformer. There is the, in Germany now, 240 volts power switch. We have Two secondary windings, yeah, and they go to, oh, let me put that out of the way, they go one end directly to our, oh, no, they don't, uh, not any longer. <laughs> that obviously... Well, there's nothing hot here, but uh, I guess that end was supposed to go to the rectifier. But if that is just a cold or a solder point that broke off, it shouldn't have made that noise. And there was shortly, uh, yeah, hmm. I know smoke should come has should have come out. Transformer windings look fine. Transformer is a wee bit warm, but uh, yeah, I can see down, down there. There's a fuse uh, 
in the primary circuit so if we should have really stressed out uh, the whole thing beyond the capabilities of the transformer that fuse ha should have blown which it didn't so i believe we had a short somehow on here somewhere uh, okay so we have two primaries uh, sorry two secondary windings and one was initially going to the bridge rectifier down here and yeah the middle tap and the other one are going to this board with that big relay and from that big relay uh, it's going to the other AC input of the bridge rectifier. So yeah, that was, uh, I remember the clicking sound uh, at about 15 volts. So uh, yeah, it switched between basically, what does it say? It says there are 10, 18, 17, no, that's, that's not a voltage, that's no voltage, but I guess uh, 15, around 15 volts here, uh, around 15 volts here, and it either taps up only the one secondary winding with 15 volts for the uh, lower voltage ranges, and then switches over to the two windings in series to get about 30 volts DC uh, AC rectified and yeah and the management of that is done by the sport which we can get out right now Sorry. Let's see. There's also one cable going to uh, yeah the negative of the uh, big electrolytic filter capacitor and. The other cable is going yeah to the mostly to the positive side. There is uh, the ammeter, the analog ammeter uh, in between it, but uh, yeah. So yeah, it gets the uh, current voltage here and depending on that it switches the relays to uh, use uh, only one windings or both windings in series. Wonderful. And yeah, I hate to snip stuff off. Maybe you can repair it anyway. So um, let me get my soldering station. So I'm back and uh, with a coffee, of course. <clears throat> that might take longer than I expected. I mean, I didn't expect that complexity. So, uh, come on. Fucking melt. I mean, this is really all. You see what I'm doing? Yeah, you can. This is all very freestyle. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, oh. Yeah, we have a detailed look at that when I get it out. Solder was not a cost factor in the manufacturing of this. Okay. This is not a good tip for desoldering such big joints. But it's working anyway. This is a good leaded stuff. It goes easy. And <sighs> makes very nice. Cubes. <laughs> yeah, I'm using this uh, desoldering tool, which is basically a spring powered piston uh, sucking it off. I don't like solder wick because if I have solder wick, I always run out of it. So, yeah, very nice. So a little trim pot for, I guess, uh, tweaking the output voltage when the relay will switch over to both secondary windings. And, ooh. This is certainly not very <laughs> convincing. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see if we can have a look at these transistors they are using here. If you wondered why did I cut, I put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah. And that is uh, can you read it? B C Oh let me try the magnifying glass B C two five seven B C two five seven B all right. Or two three seven. You can probably yeah two three seven B B C two three seven B and the other one Come on. I have to do that offline, sorry. BC 307, so yeah. Just some normal transistors. I don't think it uh, makes sense to look that up or to decode how that thing is working. I mean, I guess it implements some Schmidt, Schmidt trigger or uh, hysteresis function, so uh, the relays won't uh, start to flutter 
when you are exactly uh, with your output voltage at that voltage where it should switch from one to both windings or vice versa. Yeah, let's dive deeper. Oh, I see the hearts of the operations. From RCA. Yeah, we'll see that. And that is mounted how? Uh, with these screws. It's a two layer construction. <laughs> There's not too much on it. Okay. There. Several cables of the same color, that is uh, inconvenient, but um, I don't really care. Um, going through the uh, amperage limit switch, I cut them, just a second. I mean, I thought about repairing this, but... <sighs> Uh, I don't like repairing such stuff. I mean, this is awful. One, two, three. And... And they could use recolors. This is going to the voltage adjustments. And yeah, we should be uh, not completely scot free. This is going to yeah, our output terminal for ground. Something more. Yeah, where's the power coming from? Uh, that green cable is going... Oh, here it's the brown cable to the basis of our 2M3555 transistors. And it came from around here where that smaller power transistor is, which is probably was driving them. And here is the positive end from the rectifier. So there's still a blue cable. And the blue cable is going to the huh, positive terminal, but it's, yeah, that's pr probably only voltage feedback. Blue to the positive terminal, of course. And then we have here... That's on the positive side of the electrolytic capacitor and is going to... Yeah, probably the... Uh, I don't, hope, hope I don't get it wrong. The... Um, emitters. No, it's from the positive end, it should go to the collectors. Ah. And the black cable is, yeah, the black cable is actually from the bridge rectifier. Yeah, look at this. What a wonderful construction. The, 
current limiting. <sighs> Ooh. I don't even I don't even want to know how that thing worked. So they try to botch together here some precision high voltage resistor. So these are R24 and R24, so uh, 0.24 ohms each, 10 percenter, which is uh, very rough, but uh, and then they put some little guys with higher values in parallel to uh, tweak that down a little bit. I guess that that was done per unit. Yeah, they could have invested instead of a ten percent tolerance into something with two percent tolerance. Would think, no. That's another big diode here. I guess that's the uh, general output protection diode. So if you uh, connect an internal uh, an external power source with a uh, reverse po reverse polarity uh, to your power supply, uh, it doesn't destroy your power supply. It shortens out the uh, external power source. Yeah, the electrolytics, uh, they all look reasonably good. Then we have this little guy here. Oh yeah, and this is of course, sorry, kept the rating. Uh, CA723. <laughs> what else? CA. Made by RCA. In 2002, week 7? Month 7? No, that's uh, that thing is guaranteed 30, 30 years, 35 years old. So yeah, maybe that's not really a date code. Ha, and the cap. Made by Fraco, West Germany. Yeah. Feels okay. Looks okay. Mm. Yeah, well. That's the controller, nothing new. I would like to see. Oh, I have to look at it offline. Maybe I can see what kind of transistor that is. Yeah, the driver for the uh, 2 and 30 50 50 is a uh, sorry. Uh, hmm. uh, BD two forty four. So also no MOSFET and. Uh, yeah. I, no, no, don't bother to trace that out. I mean, mm. I don't like it. Okay, but uh, there's <laughs> still more here. Let's see. Um, yeah, I will position that a little bit different. Okay. Uh, this is backside of the uh, analog ammeter. There is the shunt. And obviously the 
switch for the current limiting, which uh, had a few connections uh, to the, yeah, if you want to call it main board. Uh, it also switches some other shunts. Hmm. Yeah, I won't bother. The uh, analog voltmeter, yeah, the bridge rectifier. And this is aluminum casing, so they screwed it uh, right down here. And oh, wait, I'm seeing something that's rather interesting. Ah, uh, no, uh, let's see can get this into a shot. Ah, that's a nice feature. This is a, a ground line and there, you can see it right behind there. From the ground there are two small caps to uh, both output terminals. Yeah. To get rid of any high frequency noise. So yeah, I guess that was state of the art back then. Um, <laughs> if you have any idea uh, for a link uh, to a simple circuit, uh, to put in there instead, 5 amps, 30 volts, let me know. And if you want to have a look at another teardown video uh, on my channel, uh, it's of a laser unit uh, from a color laser printer, quite complex thing, uh, link is below. Yeah, thank you Anton, till next time. One last thing you can probably not read it because uh, it's a faint, but it says 10th of October 83. Yeah, uh, checked by Mr. Weasel and uh, I can't read that signature. Yeah, but 83.